Deepcool is back again with another new water cooler with its own unique niche once again and use case. Just, they are just killing it right now. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety Orky Triple XL, and I've got another 240, or well, basically the 240 of another new sub range from Deepcool. And this is like even fitting into even more of like a no gap sort of setup. Uh, it's a it's a tried and tested thing, I think in the IT environment, companies like ASUS do it very well. MSI has come up to the plate and has started to really bat there, especially hard uh, as well with their motherboards and graphics cards. And now Deepcool's done the same thing for us with water cooling. And you can go from an LE series to a Gamax to an entry level LS SE, which is gonna be this series. Then you've got your LS series and then your Deepcool castle on top. So there's five different products for 240 mil, all with varying performance and quality level and use case scenarios and stuff. And this is no different. They've done it once again. So let's jump straight into it. Let's get, get you an idea of what's in the box. So you obviously get the 240 mil radiator with two standard plastic cornered fans, not rubberized like the full on full fat LS. So already an inherent uh, change there. The other major change with it is these are no longer daisy chained one into the other within one uh, port out for your fan header and for your RGB. These are using a daisy chain and split system, which is also somewhat advantageous because it gave it some customization that I think Deepcool didn't even account for. And I've been a little bit cheeky uh, and used the in, in packet resistors and stuff um, to do something a little bit naughty, which I'll show you a little bit later. Then you, you, you're looking at the component quality of the fittings and stuff. Everything is extremely good. You can see on video, I've got a nice close up there, all the anodized pieces, very, very nicely painted for some of them. And others, uh, you know, just anodized straight up. So they're going to look like that without being scratched or whatever throughout their lifetime, which is really good. Exactly the same system in general as the LS series stuff, except for the fact that on this specific um, model, there's no support for uh, TRX for your uh, ND Threadripper. There's, you cannot use it on that or LJ2066. So there is now tiering there if, even with access to which chipset or LGA dial size you're going to be putting it on. Then we have the pump head, which is beefy. It actually makes this liquid cooler itself actually slightly heavier than the other, other series. This is full aluminium, this block. So it does, and it does look really, really good. I like that it does have a different style to the other LS series stuff, but they haven't changed the pump. Here's the big plus of this series is the pump on this is basically exactly the same. So what changes, like I said, from one to the other is mainly just that chipset allocation and then how the fans work. So these just do a daisy chain or two split um, over there with normal headers. So you could even feasibly connect both of these fans directly into the motherboard, except for the fact that they do come with rather short cables. So it's implied that you're gonna have to use the splitter in any case. Now, included in that package, you may have seen two other fan cables, which might look a little bit odd to you with just four pin male and female on the other end. Well, it's because there are resistors in those lines. And what you can do with them is lock and limit the total fan speed so that it actually can't go over that RPM. So if you don't want to go into the higher RPM ranges and you want to enforce it to run at a lower RPM, then you can do that. A lot of us are gonna have motherboards and stuff that have really good controllers of that, especially if you've got an MSI or an Asus, then the auto fan controller can do really like accurate, you know, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, six and a half hours later. Brain clot is extreme. Really nice curves. <laughs> It took me like a good 20 seconds to remember that. Uh, sorry, a bit of a brain fart there. But yes, your fan curve settings, you can do that without having the inline resistors, but on motherboards and stuff that just sort of max it out, then you can put the inline resistor and make sure it's not going to do like push too hard if you don't want it to, which is like a nice little touch to have. Not the first time I've ever seen it. I've seen it actually on some older Cooler Master stuff. They were fiddling around with stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to see them also following suit. Now, 
Because I kind of understand electronics a little bit, um, I did something cheeky and I was like, the intention with these is to have the daisy chain split so they are connected in parallel, basically into the motherboard, and then have a, a resistor on either side. But if you put the resistor directly into the motherboard and then have the connection behind it, it actually enhances that effect even further because now the resistor is sitting before that split. So then it's gonna resist everything before the output into the fans. So they dropped it even lower. So it was about 1,400 RPM with that, about 1,700 RPM with them in the normal, uh, you know, parallel setup. And then without them, we can see it as high as 2,500. The noise differences between these are also quite different. You are gonna see um, you know, quite a lot of dB, whereas like the 1400 is basically almost whisper silent. 1700 hits about 50 dB. It's somewhat audible, but not very loud. And then yeah, the full fat like 2400 RPM is like, it's loud. It, it will make quite a bit of noise, but it also gives exceptional performance. And this is where we get into our comparative. So I've tested it against the H100 RGB, which is our baseline cooler, which is rated as a 200 watt solution. And here I have the 13600K with DDR5 4800 megahertz. I'm not too worried about the RAM or the RX 6600 GP or even the SSD because what we're trying to do is keep that GPU or that CPU cool. I have got a Z590 which does have a 70 amp power circuit. So, or Z690 at least. Oops, sorry uh, MSI, it's a Z690 torpedo. I do remember, okay? I just remember mostly it's got a 14 a phase power system that's capable of 70 amps. So it's got more than enough headroom to even run a 13900K at 270 watt. So for this, I pushed it and unlocked it with the extreme uh, tuning utility so that it would actually go over that to 220 watts because what I wanted to test was thermal throttling. And boy, did it come out with a good swing because not only was it 10% less thermal throttling over a longer period, over 10 minutes longer than what I ran the course because I noticed it was doing so well, I wanted to completely try and heat soak it to see if it would even continue dropping, but it didn't. It dropped less over time. It had a better average than the H100, considerably better, like eight to 10 degrees on a scale of 100 is 10% better, which is exactly what we see with that thermal throttling. So it's almost like that test all lines up. And then even into Cinebench, where I did full 20 minute tests, it then beat the Corsair H100. So it literally relates to better performance at a better temperature. And the Corsair H100 is no slouch. It is our test bench radiator for a reason. It is because it is very, very good. But the disc cool stuff, especially LA series and upwards, just continues to prove to be better. These have incredible pumps. They are their fourth generation pumps. They are basically exactly the same from the LS to the castle. The difference is some of the tuning in them. I noticed the castles do have a slightly higher R RPM on their pumps. This one topped out at about 3100, 3200. So exactly in line with its specification. And then obviously the quality and air pressure from the fans. So those ones I would say would give you a better audio profile in general. This one, you know, it's a bit more of a rudimentary style of what they did with the LS, but the performance sort of speaks for itself. It's still got an incredibly good pump and radiator. And that's what lasts you through your warranty period. Your fans and stuff, depending on how long they have to use, you know, their lifetime is rated in thousands of hours. So if you're using the machine 24 seven, that's generally gonna die, you know, over time, um, just because those bearings, they're not as good or as, um, well balanced, let me put it that way, as something like the pump would be, because these have every other factor, environmental factor, it's gonna depend on your case and how much airflow you're getting in and blah, blah, blah. It's a, this is a closed system, this is not. So the fans tend to not have as good of a lifetime as the pump. And the pump in this instance has a five year warranty. So you can get this, product now for about two grand. Um, we'll see, I think ROE hits it with a price difference a little bit, but I like that it's in its own niche and sort of exactly the same as the LS, but just a little bit different in its execution. Between the two, I think it's gonna depend on your use case environment and which pump head you prefer, because that's really the defining difference between the two is the look and feel of the product, which I like because it just means that it's same, same, but different, but still same and you're not worried about performance or anything like that, you can just go for the aesthetic changes and then you're A for away. Anywho, 
That is all I have for you on this LS520 SE. If you have enjoyed this review, then please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.